And that's why I use one finger in there when really you should be using like six. But it is what it is. Hello and welcome to the first video in my living room remodel series. This first video we're going to be tackling the floor, but eventually the whole room is going to have a new facelift. What are you doing? Thanks for at least being on your blanket. We moved into this house a little over three years ago and it's time to start updating. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure if there's hardwood floors under here. I'm assuming that there is not. That's why I'm going over to this corner. I want to pull up a little bit of the carpet to start just to see what's underneath. And these putty knives make short work of taking off this molding. Just using some pliers for the nails I got stuck in here. And if you need to pry something away towards the drywall, use your putty knife to protect it. And now the moment of truth. What is underneath the carpet? Is it hardwood? Is it plywood? It is. It's plywood. Ow! Yep, it's plywood. Could be that lucky, right? All right, on to the next task. This was a built-in that came with the house. It was actually a lot taller than this and it just didn't fit a TV. So what I had did when we first moved in was I kind of hacked it in half and I put on this top. That way we could fit a big screen TV, but now it's time to come out. That was just loosely laid on there. It's a little heavy still. Let me take you in for a closer look. I actually thought that the carpet it went up to this built-in, but there was old carpet underneath. And so when they put down the new carpet, they didn't bother moving anything. All right, so check this out. I don't know what they did and if this is up to code. But all they did was they just added a wire from this outlet that goes into here so that they could add an outlet in here. I don't know if that's the code or not, but I guess I gotta go cut the power. Take care of that. So if you're watching this and you're an electrician, could you let me know in the comments below if this is code or not? It's been really bothering me and I would love to know the answer. Now to drag this thing out those doors. So with the power turned off, I'm just double checking all the outlets to make sure that I got the right breaker and I'm good to go. All right, so I'm bringing you guys in here closer. Have you ever seen, instead of using the screws on the side, they use the push-ins. And uh, for anybody who doesn't know how to release these, sometimes people just cut it and then just replace the whole outlet, but you don't need to do that. You gotta get a little screwdriver like this guy. Put that screwdriver in that little slot underneath the wire push that in and pull there it is pop right out so you can see that wire right there again so you can see that little tab in there right here get a little screwdriver put it in there push in and pull on that wire at the same time and they pop right out by the way i love that on this ground wire you know that's a great splice job right here very talented now remember, I am not a licensed electrician. Please call a professional. Thank you.
best way I've found in the past when I've done this before, um, just grabbing a paint scraper like this. The one with the beveled edge, it works even better. But basically you're just sliding it, get it close to the nail and then just get that started. And once you get it started, you just kind of pop them up and just go nice and easy. Just like that. Now it's time to put on those knee pads and get to work. Choose your weapon of choice. One eternity later. All right, so here we are at day two. Yesterday we tore up all the rug, got all the liner up, got all the tack strips cleaned up. I went through and picked up, I don't know, about 100 to 150,000 staples. I'm like 95% sure I got them all, but I know there's gonna be a few out there. First thing I'm gonna do is get these couches. I've made some room in my kitchen area so I can get these completely out of here instead of shuffling them all around. And then I'm gonna give this whole thing another vacuum. I vacuumed last night, I'm gonna vacuum again. I just wanna make sure I got as much stuff up as I can. And then we're gonna start laying down some floor. So let's do it. Now there are plenty of online calculators to figure out your square footage that you would need. Always try to buy about 10% more than you need because when you're cutting some of these uh, panels, you're kind of left with some odd ends and so you may not have enough for a full run. So you always want to buy about 10% more. Next, go through a few boxes and lay out all of the different planks. You want to make sure that you're not putting two duplicate planks next to each other. Also get yourself a flooring installation kit. It comes with a few accessories that you'll need. Especially these spacers, you want to have your floating floor not butt up against the wall. You want to leave a little bit of space. So that's what I'm doing here. My second plank in and you can see if I snap this in right here I have a air conditioning and heating register here my second plank in line here is like halfway through it so no bueno what I'm going to do is actually make it easier is on the first plank I'm going to take off probably about a foot and a half and that'll slide everything down which will probably get this second plank to be right about here and then I just think it would be better to have a full plank and just with a hole in it versus trying to cut out, you know, the side of it and only having a couple inches on each end here for the next plank to lock into. And essentially, it'll be like that with just a hole in it. But that's the plan. Vinyl plank is super easy to cut. I'm just using a miter saw here with a regular wood blade. It makes a nice, real clean cut. Not everybody has a miter saw though. You have a jigsaw, you can easily use a jigsaw, an oscillating tool, and if you don't have any of those tools, you can use a box cutter. This stuff is really simple to, to cut. You can just score it with a box cutter and you can snap it. It's simple. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Another thing that comes in that kit is this rubber block. It has a cutout on the bottom of it that slides over the top of this so it doesn't damage anything. And you wanna, you hit this instead of hitting the edge of the plank and it snaps everything together. So the brand I'm using is Mohawk brand, not a sponsor, obviously. I only have 50 subscribers, but it's vinyl plank flooring. Their system is called the click and lock system. Other brands have a very similar system. Um, but everybody has their own name for it. In a minute, I'll show you a close-up of how it actually locks in. 
So when you come to an end piece and you need to measure it, obviously you can't put this up to the wall here and make your mark because you need to keep this end because this matches with this end. So all you have to do, flip it around, put this side against the wall where you need it to be, and then just make a mark on this side. And that's where you cut it. When you reach the end of a row, you're not gonna have any room for that rubber block that comes in that kit to fit over the end of the plank in the wall. So you need to be able to hit that into place. So that floor insulation kit also comes with a metal, I guess you could call it a hook. It basically, the end of it slides in between the wall and the plank so that you can hit it and pull it away from the wall and lock it into place. Again, I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. I'll get you a nice close up. You can really see how it works. Okay, here you can see a real good shot of that click lock system. I push it in at an angle and then I get it underneath the lip of the previous plank and simply just fold it down. Give it a couple of taps just to make sure it's locked in. Then I use the rubber block to seat the end of the plank into the previous one. And here's a good look how that metal hook works. It just slides in between the plank and the wall and it just gives you a spot to hammer so you can lock it in place. Pro tip, don't put the tripod on the same floor in the same vicinity so it doesn't shake like that. So on this last section, I had to trim off just maybe a quarter of an inch so it would fit. And remember, you have to leave about a quarter of an inch away from the wall because it is a floating floor. You don't want it butt up against the wall. So next I got to deal with this small notch right here. And finally, the last piece. Oh wait, I have the step up. Oh yeah, I guess I gotta do that. This worked out pretty good because I only need one full width of the vinyl plank here to fit this area. So you'll see I'm actually lifting it up a quarter of an inch and I'm not worried about that because there's a piece of quarter round that's gonna be that whole length that will cover that gap. So I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, but this way ended up working. I used liquid nails on the back of these and I actually drove in a couple of brad nails to help hold it in place while that glue dried up. You gotta be careful with the brad nails. If you get it too close to the corners or the sides, it will crack the panels. You probably don't even need it in hindsight. So again, just liquid nails. Of course, this is like the one last staple I forgot. But liquid nails, and then I'm just gonna use everything I can find to prop against it and keep pressure on it as it dries. Again, this did work, so I was happy with the result.
Be sure to grab some sandpaper or a sanding block, knock off those edges. Otherwise the cover won't sit level. And with this, finally, I am now complete. Well, that is until my wife saw the cover and didn't like the color, so we end up changing those out later. Otherwise, I think it came out pretty good. So that's it for the floor video. Uh, there's gonna be more in this series if you wanna see maybe how I built this floating console right here. Or maybe you wanna see how I built this feature wall. As well as putting a coat of paint and replacing all the trim over here. This room's transforming. I'll show you the whole thing in a reveal at the end of the series. But if you wanna check out the rest of the series, the next video is gonna be uploading very soon. So be sure to subscribe. Click that bell, get your notifications so you can know when the next one's coming out in this series. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.